In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to build a resume template in Google Docs. Now, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make this video at all because I know Google Docs has resume templates, but after I scrolled through them, I was kind of like, I think we can do something a little bit better. In this video, we're gonna cover end to end how to build a resume template. And the benefit of having a template is that you can make a copy of it and reuse the template over and over, to curate and craft your resume for the different roles that you might be applying for. Rather than having to try to modify existing resumes, just having this nice clean template that you can reuse multiple times will make your job search just that much easier. So if that sounds good to you, Keep watching. Oh, and as a little disclaimer, I did steal this template from my partner, so thanks, hon. All right, so this is Google Docs. So let's go ahead and name this resume, and we'll get started. We're going to start by having your name, followed by your email, and We'll also add your website and we'll want to make sure that this is formatted, centered, okay? Your name, we'll usually want to make it a little bit bigger so we can put an example, Sam Taylor. We can put an example email, so mine is the coding workbook at gmail.com and then website Taylor.com. something like that. How I did this on my Mac keyboard, this little dot is I put, uh, I think it's op Alt 8 and that made the little dot. So we want our name to be front and center. We want to make sure we have our email and a website if you have it. You can put your phone number if you want to include your phone number. One thing I definitely would not include is your address, but if you do wanna put your uh, city or state, you can do that. So I can put something like that, but you don't need to put like your exact home address because you know once you move farther through the recruitment uh, process, you'll have the opportunity to give them your, your actual address. All right, so let's go ahead and now we'll start to add our professional experiences. So I like to do professional experience. And then below this, I like to insert, I use this horizontal line just to kind of break it up. Let's see, I'll just remove that. There we go. And then for the professional experience, I usually like to put the company name and then I like to put like a dash and then the location. So for example, like I'll put a company name and then I'll do San Francisco, California. And then I'll use the tab key to put the years. So I'll put, you know, start date to end date. This could be, you know, like January 2020 to March 2020, something like that. And then on the next line, I usually like to put in italics, same font. I like to put the um, role or the job title. So for you, it's, you know, say you're a teacher or you're an instructional designer, this could be, you know, we can change this to instructional designer. We'll change that here. And then we will get into, well, let me just put this back to role slash job title. And then on the next line, I will take it out of italics and go back to normal font. And then this is where we will include, um, this is the experience or I guess job explanation one, you know, the bullet points we want to explain. So this is where you say, you know, developed this product or created this seminar or led this, you know, training. So we'll do that. And usually we like to keep each of these as one to two sentences each, ideally one sentence each. And we will make sure that we do that for all of these. So. 
Each of these will be one sentence each. Okay. So now let's go ahead and we'll copy and paste this three times. One, two, and three. So this is starting to show the template. As you can see, let me zoom out a little bit. It's starting to come together. It's gonna look really nice. A few things I do wanna point out if we look at this holistically, notice that I'm not changing the font styles. I'm just using different weights or different formats of the text. So I'm using Arial, this font right here. I'm here, I'm using it bold in a bigger font size. Here I'm using all caps Arial. This is a different weight, so it's bolded here. This is italicized. It's all Arial, there's no need to, you know, play around with a bunch of different fonts. I would recommend just keeping one to two fonts per resume. And also notice that I'm just using black ink, or not black ink, but black font. You wanna keep it very simple, very easy to read because sometimes they're just sending these PDFs or your Word doc through some sort of computer uh, program and you wanna make it as easy as possible for these programs to skim because you wanna make sure it, it gets through those so that it can get to a human recruiter. So just wanna make it as clean and simple as possible. All right, so let's go ahead and now we'll copy this professional experience and we will put this below here. Up next, I like to include education. Um, we can add another space, okay. So here, how I like to format this is, um, you know, university, you can put, if you want, you can put the location. So let's say, you know, San Francisco, California. And then you can again put the, you can or you don't have to, you can option, I'll put optional grad date. This is up to you, you certainly, let me zoom in real quick. The graduation date is certainly optional. You don't have to include it you know, depending on if you want people to know that you're a fresh graduate or if you've been graduated for a long time, you know, it's totally up to you, but you do not need to include it. And then on the next line, I like to make sure that I have the degree or certificate listed below. And then say you have another, you know, say you took a certification program, you can list that or say you took some sort of like master's degree or some sort of program like that. You can put master's degree and, or I guess you would list your university and then same thing. You'd put the location, optional date, and then again, the degree or the certificate. All right, so now we are moving on to the last section, which is the skills section. Now the skills section is important to include as well because this is where you can showcase some technical or non-technical skills. Oops, I'm just gonna copy this part. So let's go ahead and add that there. Change this to skills. Again, notice how I'm keeping consistent with the headers. This is in all capital letters. This is in all capital letters. This is in all capital letters. If I wanted to, I could also mess around with like the bolding and the, the weight of it, but I would wanna make sure I'm consistent with each of these headings, right? So if I change this professional experience one to bold font, I'd wanna make sure the education and the skills are there, okay? So here in the skills section is where you're gonna list either your, you know, your soft skills, which is like your communication, leadership skills, or your hard skills, which is like your technical skills or your video editing skills. So you don't really need to divide it up into hard skills versus soft skills, but you do wanna make sure that you're including some. So for an instructional design role, typically you want to make sure that you share that you have familiarity with video editing. So I'll, in the parentheses, I can put the different video editing softwares I'm familiar with. So I'll put Camtasia, iMovie, 
and I don't know, a, I forget what it's called. A, we'll just put Adobe. I'm drawing a blank. You can also put um, learning management systems such as Meridian, learn, you know, just different learning management systems. Other things, maybe you want to put the articulate suite. This is one of the um, course development platforms that you might want to be familiar with. I go more into depth on these skills in my upcoming book. It's called Teacher to Instructional Designer. I'll link it down below for pre-order. But yeah, just, just as a heads up, you want to include skills that kind of showcase what you can do as an instructional designer. All right, so now we have the three different sections, the professional experience, the education, and the skills section. Let's go ahead and zoom out and just look at it holistically to kind of talk about this. So as I mentioned before, your name nice and clear. You wanna make sure your document is very clean and easy to skim and that you're doing a very consistent job with formatting and with spelling and grammar. Sometimes, and some mistakes that I see commonly when people are writing these job explanations is I'll notice, say, explanation one has a period at the end of the sentence, uh, point two does not have a period at the end of the sentence, and point three does have a period at the end of the sentence, so it's very inconsistent. Just be sure to be consistent with that. Another mistake that I see is people adding way too many bullet points. So. I know for your company or your school, you've done a lot of things, but you wanna make sure that you're only listing the things that are super related to the job that you're applying for. So for example, so for example, this, you know, say you're talking about a school that you've worked at and you wanna explain your, your role and what you did there, make sure it's curated to an instructional design or whatever future role you're looking for. If you're looking to stay in teaching, then you know you can keep these explanations as teaching. But if you are trying to transition into another career, you're definitely going to want to make sure each explanation is catered to those careers that you're hoping to transition into. But yeah, this, this looks good to me. The nice thing about having a template like this is that when you see a role that you want to apply to, you can go to file and then make a copy of the template and this will allow you to continue to use this template as you curate your resume to specific roles that you're looking into. And that's it for today's video. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.